making jokes in your house now. All right. Goodness. Hello. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, on Google Classroom yesterday, we had our ancient India notes. So all the way down in speaking. Wait, real quick. Did, did you guys get to do the dibbles? Did it work this time finally? Yes, it worked. I just had trouble doing on working on your mic thing. I forgot to hit the arrow. I was just trying to click on everything else except the arrow. Okay. But at least you're, it's working. Good. Make yeah, sure I finished it. Good. All right. Um, back to social studies. Sorry. I just, when I saw that, I was like, oh, I should ask. Um, under social studies, we have our ancient Indian notes. I have the PowerPoint already pulled up. And I'm going to pull up the Google slide that we were working on. We got through two and a half slides. Yep. So we're on slide three, India's mountains. So we're going to finish up slide three, then we have four and five. So we're going to go a little bit quicker today so that we can get to the other part of what we're doing. So ancient India, we are on, um, let's see, where are we? We did that. We just did this one and that one. This is the one we're on. Not what I, that's not what I meant to click. Present. All righty, can you guys see the PowerPoint? Yes. Yeah. All righty. Yeah. So we're still talking about ancient India. Himalayas are up at the top here. We have um, Western India is where the Ganges River was. It's this big one over here. And then um, Eastern India is where the Indus River is. So um, the Ghats are another set of Indian mountains. So Himalayas are a big mountain range. And now we have the Ghats. Um, there's the Eastern and the Western Ghats border. Uh, and they border the Deccan plateau on each side. So we have Deccan plateau was in the middle. It was wide and flat and dry. We learned that yesterday. And then surrounding that on the sides, on the west, we have the western Ghats, and on the east, the eastern Ghats. Um, they're very fertile, which means that they can grow crops easily. The soil is really good. Um, and then they have a lot of monsoons, and it brings a lot of rainfall. Um, and India's rivers also run right through this section. A lot of them do. So let me get a piece of paper so I can write these down as we go. All right, so we have the Ghats first, Eastern, Western, and Fertile. 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 All right. So I'm going to head back over to our notes one, which is here. Zoom in. So we're on slide three. India's mountains on that bottom section. I'm going to zoom in. 100 is too far. Go for 50. 50 is a little bit better. So our first part, the blank are another set of India's mountains. That is the Ghats. Gassed. Am I saying it wrong? I think so. Well, I don't know. Well, the T comes before the S. So it could be Gats. could be God. I don't know. I'll Google it after I type this out. I'll Google how to say it. Then we have Eastern. And Western. There's two sets of mountains, the Eastern and the Western ones. They border the Deccan Plateau, and they're very fertile. What? And we didn't get to the, uh, the next answer is on the next slide, so we'll stick with this for now. So we wouldn't get those four typed in.
What about the fifth one? It's on the next slide, so we have to go back. Um, I googled how to pronounce that mountain range, and it's Gats, not Gots. So Gats, like cats, but oh. Gats. Yep. Gasts. No, the there's no S before it, so it's G H A T S. So it's Gats, like like if you're saying a cat, cats, but with a G. Gats. Did you know there's a mob in Minecraft called Gast? I did not. I don't play. At first, Minecraft. I thought you were saying Gast. Uh, I wow, well, I heard. I noticed I you were saying Gat. That makes sense. <laughs> no, not Minecraft. Just ancient India. Okay, so there's those four. Let's go back over at our PowerPoint and um, look at the uh, the next slide that has the last one on there. So it says wildlife in both ranges is very diverse. So wildlife in the western Ghats and the eastern Ghats, there's just a lot of it. Um, it has a ton of different types of animals. It's not like, oh, it's only cows. It's only birds. It's got all kinds of things. Um, there's many medicinal plants that habitat the area as well as elephants, leopards, tigers. They're all over the place. So that last blank on our slide is diverse right here. And there's a ton of different types of wildlife there. It's very diverse, very different. All right, I'll give you a couple seconds, a uh, minute or so to type those I'm out. Done. Good. <clears throat> Alrighty, let's go ahead and keep going. Um, our next one is slide four. This is the monsoons. So we've talked, we know, we have monsoons here. We kind of know what a monsoon is. Um, uh, what's a monsoon? A big it's, it's, rain. Yeah, it's a really big, heavy rainstorm. Um, we have them here. Not yeah, often. But not very often. But no, but when it happens, it rains hard, right? Yeah. That's a monsoon. So that's mm -hmm. what we're Something talking called about. called monsoon season? Yeah, we have monsoon season. It's usually in, like, July and August. It wasn't like, that bad. Half of the year. time it rains, we get monsoons. Yep. Half of the times it rains, we don't get monsoons. It just sprinkles, sprinkles a little bit. That's true. Okay, so let's talk about these monsoons in India. Um, monsoons are strong, violent windstorms that change direction based on the season. So this is in India, not necessarily everywhere. So they're strong, violent windstorms based on the season. They have dramatic impact on India's climate as they bring rainfall to different parts of the subcontinent based on the time of year. So depending on the time of year, like up in the east, it could be heavy monsoon season, but in the west, it's like bright and sunny all the time, depending on the time of year, and that could switch at different times of the year. And then it says, while Indian farmers rely on the seasonal monsoon to bring rainfall, it is also important to know that a monsoon only refers to the changing of the wind pattern. Hmm. So we talk, we've talked about monsoons being the rain, but according to this, the wind. Interesting. So yeah, let's go ahead and go type that over in our thing. <clears throat> so in our boxes, monsoons are strong, not string, strong, violent, Winds. Windstorms, not rainstorms, but we usually get rain with the heavy wind, right? Yeah. Yep. And it's based on what? The season? The season. So 
So it changes depending on the season. These have a dramatic impact on India's climate as they bring what? Rainfall. Rainfall. Different parts of the subcontinent based on times of year. Year. Good. While Indian what rely on seasonal monsoons? So what type of occupation? Up to the next. Wait. Farmers? Good. Farmers. Oh, sorry. Hit the wrong button. Hold up. There we go. So farmers in India rely on the seasonal monsoons to bring rainfall. But just because they bring the rainfall doesn't mean that's really what a monsoon is. Because monsoon has to do with the wind pattern. Okay, so I'm going to highlight these. Go ahead and take a minute to get them typed out. Is a mic put in the computer? Somewhere, yeah. Uh, not entirely sure where. The season isn't all the way highlighted. Now it is. All right. Take about 30 seconds to finish up these ones. And we'll look at the next A minute. One. Okay, just be typing. I got it. Alrighty. A little bit more time and then we'll do the next slide. The next two slides are going to talk about the summer monsoons and then the difference between the summer monsoons and the winter monsoons here. Well, not here, but in India. Alrighty. All right, I'm going to head back over to our thing, and let's talk about monsoons. So this little box here says that people often, asso oh, people often associate monsoons with severe rainstorms, just like what we just talked about. However, the monsoon only refers to the wind, not the rain. There can be dry monsoons, which is interesting. Okay, our next one. The summer monsoons are between April and October. Okay, and then as the winter months come to an end, the weather patterns begin to shift. Air from the southwest begins to blow toward the north. Oops, sorry, the northeast. And then as the air blows across the Indian Ocean, it picks up moisture. Once it reaches the Indian subcontinent, torrential rainfall begins. So torrential, torrential is like awful, horrible rainfall. It just like doesn't stop. It's just this huge rainfall. So the summer months tend to be more like of the heavy rainfall types of monsoons. So what it says up here. In the summer, air current travels across the Indian Ocean from the southwest. The current brings moisture from the Indian Ocean and drops it over India, causing heavy rainfalls. Because of this, oops, the summer monsoon is often known as the wet monsoons in India. 
He also has one song where he went to okay. for getting the vibe. So, okay. Let's go ahead and get those typed in on the summer part. So summer monsoons, we have that they are from April to October. We're going to zoom in a little bit on these ones. Okay, so April to October. And then as the winter months come, the weather, weather pattern begins to switch. So from the southwest, the wind begins to blow towards the northeast across the Indian Ocean. So as the wind blows across the Indian Ocean, it picks up all the moisture from the ocean, all the water and stuff, and that's how we get the awful torrential downpours, raining, torrential. All right, all bad. Here we go. There we go. All right, so there's those couple. Go ahead and take about a minute, fill those ones out. Miss Jones? Yep. Um, I forgot, Um, I did the whole thing. Okay, well then just sit tight and wait for us and get okay. listen. Okay, about 30 more seconds on this part and then we'll look at the next slide. Can we watch the video again? Mm-hmm. Probably at the end. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit. There's our next part that we're going to fill out. Farmers. Let's see. This is a longer PowerPoint than I thought it was. I'm not going to lie. Our next one, farmers love the summer monsoon since it brings the much needed rainfall to grow their crops. So they need the rain and the water to grow the crops. Dairy farmers, so people that have cows um, and produce dairy, uh, they rely on the monsoons to keep their cows healthy and fed. Since a great deal of electricity is produced by the hydroelectric power plants or the water powered stuff, um, business, government officials, and schools also rely on the summer monsoons. So this monsoon season is super important to them because they need it for all kinds of different things. They use it for farming, they use it for electricity, and they rely on that electricity to help them power houses, buildings, schools, all kinds of things, okay? So we have, this is what it looks like after like a nice torrential downpour. Lots and lots of water on that area, but they're able to grow their crops based on that water. Sorry, they kicked me out, but it wouldn't log, let me log back in. Oh, sorry. That's all right. Um, and then the second picture is um, talking about how water power is provided for millions of people that need electricity. And they use waterfalls and things like this to create that power. Okay. Let's go type it all in. Farmers love the summer monsoons because it grows their crops. And then dairy farmers rely on the monsoons to keep their cows healthy. Um, a great deal of 
electricity. It's produced by the hydroelectric power plants. Lots of places rely on it, like schools. All right. There's a couple more to fill out. A little bit of time to type those ones up. Alrighty. If you need these later, the video will be up. I'm going to keep going, keep plugging along. So our next one on our PowerPoint talks about more about the summer monsoons. Um, the summer monsoon can be just as destructive as it is beneficial. So sometimes it's not good to have these torrential downpours. So we have times where it can create mudslides because it's just rained so much and the roots of the trees just can't hold on anymore and the mud just starts pouring down the side. Um, can create massive mudslides into houses and villages. According to this, it can swallow up an entire village, which is awful. So it's good to have these um, downpours and these summer monsoons, but sometimes it's just going to be destructive for these people. Um, streets can flood, you get mudslides that can break villages, and people are often killed in these times. Okay, let's go type these ones down. Summer monsoon can be just as destructive as it is beneficial. Beneficial. Streets can flood. Mudslides. Very villages and people are often killed. Sometimes these uh, summer monsoons are not the best. Okay, I'll give you a little bit of time to copy these ones down. Oops, sorry, that's my bad. There you Alrighty, we're going to scroll over and we're going to talk about winter monsoons now, the ones that happen for their winter time. So in the winter monsoons, once summer season passes and autumn arrives, the summer monsoon is replaced with the winter monsoon. The winter monsoon arrives in October and lasts until April. So it's opposite of the other one, right? Summer monsoons were April to October. Now, winter monsoons go from October all the way around to April. The wind pattern shifts almost in a complete reversal, so completely backwards. 
The wind not, uh, now blows from the northeast to the southwest. The winter monsoon is much less powerful than the summer one, uh, mainly because the Himalaya mountains block some of that wind. So we talked about yesterday how the Himalayas are the tallest, have some of the tallest mountains in the world, um, like Mount Everest. So that can sometimes block the wind that's coming from these monsoons because it can't really go through the mountain, it just hits the mountain, right? So it can block some of the wind and moisture that from getting all the way to India. Um, in the winter months, air current reverses and travels across India from the northeast. Most of the water vapor falls in the massive Himalayan mountains, which brings dry air to India. Because of this, the winter monsoons are the dry monsoon season. So summer is the wet monsoons, winter is the dry ones. So let's go ahead and type this stuff out. Um, the first blank right here is winter. And we have winter, it goes from October. And lasts until April. The wind pattern shifts almost in a complete reversal. So complete opposite. The wind then goes from northeast to the southwest. I don't know if we're going to be able to see all of it. That's right. Go to take a minute, type these ones out, and then I'll type the rest of them. Winter, October, April, reversal. Okay, type those ones first, and then we'll do the last couple. I'm going to scroll down just a little bit so we can see the other ones. So the winter monsoon is much less powerful because the Himalaya mountains block some of that wind. I'm done. Good. Can anybody keep it from reaching India? We actually don't have that last blank just yet. So let's type out these last couple. The stones? Yep. Are we going to do the story of the half-town sailor today? Um, Probably not today. Okay. Probably tomorrow. I'm not going to lie, this PowerPoint is a lot longer than I thought it was. Did not assume it would take us this long. So... We're probably just going to stop when this PowerPoint is over because I don't know about you guys, but it's kind of um, tedious and long and tiring. Um, and I'm not here to make sure that you guys aren't entertained by it, like not physically. So my assumption is that some of you guys are asleep on that other side of the computer. I'm not. <laughs> That's good. But we're probably gonna, we're probably going to stop at okay. Good. I'm glad you guys are there. But we're probably going to stop after we finish up these notes just for today because it just, we'll see. I don't, the, I don't remember exactly what the story is about. So maybe I'll look at it really quick while you guys are typing something up. But are we good on this part? Can we go to the next slide? Yeah. Yeah. I already finished all of it. Good. Our next one. Next slide.
India's winter monsoons says due to this, oh, due to the monsoons, sorry, it is a common, wow, I can't read today. It is common for India to experience droughts. What is a drought? A time where there's no water. Good. A drought is when there's no water. So because it's like they'll go from like a super wet, rainy season and then it switches to almost like these dry winds that just dry up all of their crops and everything. So it says throughout most of India's north and west, vegetation dries off. So vegetation is like plants and things to help them survive. Um, so like trees, crops that they've been trying to grow, it all dies. Um, and the soil begins to crack, which is the picture on the right. So it kind of begins to crack like dirt in a desert. Um, however, the East Coast does receive average rainfall during the winter monsoon season. And then why is this? Because the air is able to pick up some moisture from the Bay of Bengal that is then dropped into India's Eastern Ghats. This makes the Eastern Ghats one of the few fertile places in India during the winter monsoons. So there's one little area of India, Eastern India, that stays consistently fertile and they're able to grow crops all throughout the year. But usually during these winter monsoon months from October to April, um, you got the droughts and it's not super great to be able to grow food and things like that. Okay, we'll type this out. So this one that we were missing was droughts because they experienced those droughts during that time of year. Okay, and then throughout most of that, the vegetation dries off, or dies off, not dry the vegetation. When I first read it, I thought it said the vegetarians die off, and I was like, whoa, <laughs> that's not good. Um, and the soil begins to crack. But we know that the eastern side stays a little bit fertile because the Bay of Bengal brings in some water and some moisture so that the crops can still grow. That's all we have for that one. Yep. So these are the last couple that you need. Krauts, vegetation, bangle. And then we got one last slide to do, number five. Yay. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get going. Um, our next part. Oh, sorry, that was too far. Wait. So there's nothing else to fill out. You just go to the half drowned sailor story, but there was some, another slide on here. What does this slide say? Oh, wait, go. I know what to do. Oh, it talks about which monsoon this is. Okay. But there's a video about it. Oh, there's videos? Yeah, go back to the slides. Oh, down the bottom. Link? Yeah, you click on the link. Okay. And I'll take you to the video. So, based off of this slide right here, right? Mm -hmm. We have, this is our summer monsoon. We have this video to watch. But based on this picture, which way are the arrows pointing? Which way are they going? Towards the bay. Towards the bay. They're kind of going to the right, right? So when we look at this and it says that the air begins from the southwest and goes to the northeast, so southwest is over here, and it's blowing towards the northeast, that's how we know 
that this is a summer monsoon. Okay, so we're going to go back over to our slides. We'll watch those videos too. Oops, too far. So we need to look between these two pictures. Which picture shows the arrows pointing the same direction? So which type of monsoon is this? Summer or winter? Winter? Mm -hmm. Oops, and I messed up on that one. It's the opposite, right? What's the opposite of those winter ones? So this is a summer monsoon. And how do we know? What about this picture tells us that? The winds are pushing towards the right. Okay, the winds are going from southwest to northeast. So we know that this one's the summer monsoon because the winds are starting on the bottom left, the southwest. Uh, and then pushing towards the northeast, the top right. <coughs> Sorry, I swallowed my water wrong. <coughs> Okay, I'll give you another minute or so to type that out, and then we'll go watch <coughs> the video that was on that slide. Are you going to do the winter one? Yeah, we'll do the winter one. Let's We'll go watch the video first to see what a summer monsoon looks like, and then we'll type out the winter one. Okay. Okay. You can type it out right now if you want to. You don't have to type exactly what I type if you know what it is. Okay. Okay. All righty. I'm going to go... Pull up the video. There's two of them. It's made it clear that yeah, we're going to watch the first one first. So this first video is one of the um, rain monsoons. So this is a summer monsoon. And it was a deadly one in Pakistan. So here we go. So that was a super bad rainstorm. Um, yes, I believe that they were. So it seems like a lot of people die during these times um, because the rainfall rainfall there can be really deadly. Um, these storms come in and then it's just like major flooding that some people just can't escape from that flooding. It's, ha it's, it's not happened in Winslow, but it's rained pretty hard to where there was like a foot of water at my house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those did it hurt? Like, did the drops of rain hurt? I don't know. It was like it probably did. It I might think have I been. remember, like one time, like the rain here and went. Oh, one time, like, like for like for like it was like clear. The sky was clear, and then the next like thirty seconds, it was raining like really hard, and like the rain hurt me kind of. Yeah. Like that might have been yeah, that happens. All right. Our next one, the last part. So we know that this top one is a summer monsoon. So that means that this has to be what type of monsoon? Winter. 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 This is a winter monsoon. A winter. Winter. 
winter monsoon. And we know this because the wind is going from the northeast, so it's completely opposite. So instead of going from the southwest to the northeast, it's going from the northeast to the southwest. But that's the difference. The way that the wind is blowing is the only difference between a winter and a summer monsoon. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys a second to type that out. Uh, if you finish, don't turn it in. There is that other slide that has like the story of the drowned man, I think is what it's called. Are we going to do it? Um, not today. We'll start tomorrow with that. Okay. Yeah, we're going to finish typing this. We'll watch the winter monsoons video. That and then... And then the in ancient Indian. Yep, and then we'll watch the the uh, the song again, and then I'll let you guys go. The other one is different. It's just a guy talking. Yeah. I like I like the old one better than the this new one. Social studies. All right, about thirty more seconds to type that out. My battery is starting to be low. Okay, we're almost done here. Maybe go find the charger really quick. I'm done typing. Well, it's on my tablet, and the charger yeah. is slower than how fast it uh, drains the batteries, and it's at 4%. So. Thanks for okay. reminding me, Charlie. So if it dies, that's all right. We're just going to watch a couple videos. So if it dies, you're all good. You won't miss anything. Okay, so I'm going to go pull up the winter video, watch how the monsoons work. Oh, this is a two-minute one. So this one's about how the monsoons work in Asia and that we're seeing a lot. So go. go ahead and uh, mute your mics on your end just in case. All right. Ms. Joan? Oh, yeah. Can I go to the restroom? Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. You're currently studying are located in Asia. You may not understand why we call this region monsoon Asia. Contrary to how it's sometimes used in everyday speech, as in it's a monsoon out there, monsoon actually refers more to wind than rain. Monsoons are the prevailing sea to land and land to sea winds that determine wet and dry seasons. The continent of Asia, especially near India, experiences seasonal changes in wind direction, producing either rainfall or drought. Notice on this map, India is located between the huge land mass of Asia and the vast waters of the Indian Ocean. We know that land and water change temperature at different rates, causing instability in atmospheric pressure. This difference in pressure creates wind, which determines the wet and dry season. In the summer, the land mass of Asia warms rapidly, but the Indian Ocean is still relatively cool. As a result, that warmer air begins to rise. This is associated with a low pressure system over the Asian continent. Conversely, the cooler air over the ocean begins to fall creating conditions associated with high pressure. Remember that wind always blows from high pressure to low pressure. As a result, during the summer, the winds blow from sea to land. The moist air blowing from the sea in combination with the rising air over Asia creates intense rainfall during the wet monsoon season, typically experienced in India from June to September. However, this process reverses during the winter. As colder air settles over Asia, high pressure is established over the continent, but the relatively warmer ocean water creates rising air and thus low pressure dominates. These conditions create a land-to-sea wind pattern, therefore a lack of moisture over Asia. 
As a result, during the dry monsoon, from Next. December to May, India receives little, if any, precipitation. Take note of how high and low pressure systems impact the monsoon seasons of this region. These extreme conditions have plagued Indian agriculture for centuries, as farmers rely on the wet monsoon season to provide water for their crops. Recently, the monsoon seasons have become less reliable and more dramatic, causing prolonged drought and devastating flooding. Okay. So that was just a little bit more information on. Um, and he had the trap. Monsoon. The yeah. way he talked was funny. Yeah, he, he, I don't know where he was from, but he had a little bit of an accent, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna check uh, attendance really quick, and then we will watch that video. Oh, hang on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Bird. Okay, got everybody. Sorry. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll watch our India um, 